Hi, this is Ms. Techify. I wanted to give an updated review of the Motorola Triumph and what I and other users of the Triumph are finding out about this phone and to answer some of the most asked questions. The main questions people are asking are, is it worth the price and or the upgrade? Motorola is a love-hate relationship. It has features that other Virgin Mobile Beyond talk phones on the market right now don't offer. Camera with LED flash, Camera Touch Autofocus Auto Exposure, Adobe Flash Support, 4.1 inch screen, Mini HDMI port, Wi-Fi N, 1 GHz Snapdragon processor, better support for newer apps on the market, TalkBack for accessibility, G-Sensor calibration, but it has issues that seem to be prominent with a lot of users, slow lock on GPS, low signal areas losing connections, low signal indoors, and a few other minor things that we'll be going over. Let's go over quick specs on the phone. Uh, the Motorola Triumph is 3G. It is Wi-Fi BGN capable, 4.1 inch screen. On the ports we have a micro HDMI and a mini USB port. We have the speakers on this side and this side. Volume up and down. 3.5 headphone jack and we have the power lock button. On the back here we have a 5 megapixel camera with flash and over here you'll see a noise canceling mic in case any of you are wondering why there's a little hole there next to the on the cases. It's a capacitive touch screen. Uh, it does come with a factory screen cover on it. You can go see the other video that I have posted on how to remove it if you don't want it. Uh, please do that at your own risk. Uh, what's underneath is Gorilla Glass. Netflix is now supported on the Motorola Triumph with version 1.3 on the application. If after installing Netflix it says connection fail, try restarting your phone and running the application again. If you want Netflix on the Optimus, you'll have to use modded APK. Intercept users, sorry, but hey, you have your physical QWERTY keyboard. Bluetooth on the Triumph. I had no issues with my stereo LG full headset. The sound was great, even 40 feet away and up on the second story leaving my phone on my desk. It worked great with all applications that I tried. With my cheap $5 Mono Emerson single ear it only worked with calls. Devices have to be compatible and support what you're trying to do. The external speaker may not be as loud as some other phones but it works great and it sounds decent for both voice and music. I like the Samsung Intercept, the external speaker is really great for music, but voice calls can be garbled with a little bit higher bass in it. I like that the Triumph speaker is on the sides and is very audible for the ring tone when on a flat surface. Call quality for the external speaker, I will let you hear. An example. So here is an example of the external. On August 13th, it is currently 55 degrees Fahrenheit with 87% relative humidity. With the call sound quality, there are some people that are saying that the sound quality is not so great. I've had no issues. If you're reading other people's reviews online and they have complaints about the headphone jack, I have had absolutely no issue with the headphone jack. And there could be other factors involved for that person who has complaints such as they have a hearing loss or they're using dollar store headphones because I did try a dollar store headphones in this and you could hardly hear anything at all. Battery use for the Triumph. For what this pro phone provides, I think it did a fairly decent job. There are many different scenarios that would drain a battery faster. Biggest battery drains are live wallpaper, screen brightness, poor reception, 
background programs after watching a full movie of Netflix on Wi-Fi with Bluetooth headset I still had over a half of a battery with screen flicker that some people have been writing about um, there's either, even people that have posted videos yes I have seen the screen flicker on my phone and it's when I continually touch the lock button turning the screen on and off like a kid playing with a light switch adjust your time out on your screen if you need it on longer when the screen's been off for around 10 seconds and turned back on it doesn't happen so let me see if I can show you exactly what it looks like so I'll leave it off for a few seconds that's what the screen flicker looks like turn it on and off yet if I turn it off I wait just a little bit you're gonna see it not happen with a cell antenna a lot of places have been listing the phone specs as having a CDMA 800-1900 megahertz. This is very incorrect and I'm not going to say name the big places that were doing it. The Triumph is CDMA 1900 megahertz only as listed by Motorola on their specs page. This means reception indoors will be a little less because the lower the frequency the better the penetration. But after running network signal info by Kbits and logging the signal, I did the Triumph and the Optimus side by side, and they both had the same uh, signal drops at pretty much the same time. Yes, the Triumph does show slightly lower signal, but in reading forums of the Nexus S that recently had problems, most people said it was fixed with a software update. With this application called Network, you can find it on Android Market. If you're having trouble flipping from 3G to 1X uh, for whatever reason, maybe uh, for whatever reason, um, you can go in and change to just a 3G, which is the Vito only. Uh, this is something that you, the data cards, when you plug them into the computer, that you can do as well. Um, so anyways, you can hold it in 3G only and it will not go into the 1X. The problem with that, when you do this and be mindful, you're not going to get any phone calls. When somebody calls, it's just going to ring and ring and ring and ring and you're not going to hear it. So in that case, be sure to switch it back to CDMA Auto. Uh, the CDMA only is going to put it into 1X. Let's see that. Yeah, and again, don't forget to put it back into auto. With a Wi Fi reception, Triumph is Virgin Mobile's first Wi Fi BGN phone. I've had only one issue with Wi Fi reception on a modem that was on its way out. Many of you were wondering about the hotspot on the Triumph. You can root your Triumph. Um, that was in another video, how to root that with a ginger break. And there's in apps that you can install, such as Barnacle on the Triumph. And it does recognize by wireless devices, but it's not fully working. People claim they can get it to work by adjusting the MTU to 1472. With the camera and video quality, the camera has the 5 megapixel with flash. And I'll be showing some example pictures.
video per the Motorola specs are as high as HD 720p quality, 1280 by 720p resolution, and up to 24 frames per second. I was never able to get over 19 frames per second in video capture in any size format combination I chose, but I only used two different micro SD cards and one card would only record at 12 frames per second. Video only records 3GP, even though there's selection for codec, but the SD is the key factor. I suggest not using anything less than a class 10. There's a front-facing VGA camera that can take still pics, videos, and even video chat. Video chat on the front and back of the camera depend on the program. And I'll be giving an example video of what this camera can do. You'll probably notice my interface looks a little different. I have Go Launcher installed and uh, it customizes the front a little different. Web browser with a Triumph. I, I am on Wi Fi. It uh, loads pretty fast. In advanced settings of most browsers, you can set it to recognize it as a desktop browser instead of a mobile. I currently have MSN loaded in Marin as a uh, to recognize it as a Chrome browser. Political editor and chief White House correspondent Chuck Todd is in Des Moines, Iowa tonight. With the GPS on the Triumph, that one probably is the most complained about feature. It has slow GPS lock times. For some people, it's more uh, instant if you're in a excellent reception area. But for me, uh, in a low reception area, it could take about five minutes to get a lock on the GPS. Sometimes it's a minute. I find that running GPS fix helped a little bit. There are some people that claim that by editing a system file, that it fixes the GPS signal. They change it to a different NTP server. And if that's the case, there's still hope that the GPS slow locking is fixable with a software update. This is GPS test. When it actually gets a lock, you'll see the accuracy in feet. Now, once the GPS is finally locked in, the Motorola Triumph is quite accurate. Okay, so the GPS is finally locked on, and it took a little over a minute to lock on. There are people talking about the camera blob, and I'm going to give an example of what the camera blob is. When I go ahead and take a picture with and without the flash, and the area that the flash was where it focused, where it flashed in on, and is very light and then take it without the flash you'll notice in that exact same area is where they call it the green blob um, it seems that the camera is trying to adjust the picture as if you're going to use the flash that is my guess in it because it's the same exact area side by side Before purchasing, know your coverage area. If unsure, get it from a local retailer that will give a full refund. Some stores only do an exact exchange, such as Target. If it's your first time purchase or you currently have an Intercept or 8530 smartphone, I think it's worth the price if you have the money. If you're upgrading from the Optimus, which is still a terrific phone, it's a hard decision. Is there something that the Triumph has that the Optimus doesn't? What's important to you? 
Remember, there will always be better later on. I've seen the Optimus Black that might be out for Virgin Mobile in October. That's a rumor. And the benchmarks are 500 less than the Triumph. No mini HDMI, but a brighter screen that's supposed to be more efficient on battery use. And the bottom buttons turn blue.